Thank you, Jennifer. I'll take a motion to open the public hearing. Yeah. Trustee Golio, second Trustee O'Donnell. All in favor? <laughs> Meeting will come to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag and a prayer by the mayor. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As we meet tonight for the annual organization meeting, let us remember how blessed we are to be alive, living in Dobbs Ferry, this great little village along the beautiful Hudson River, so close to the greatest city in the world and the best country in the world. And as we are entrusted as a body and board of trustees, let us seek the strength and wisdom to work together as neighbors and leaders, representing all the residents, to be open, to be fair, and to respect each other's reasonable opinions, to recognize the rule of the majority while assuring the minority view is also heard, to conduct our business in a nonpartisan way, free from politics or special interests, and that we are guided to make carefully and thoughtfully and thoughtful decisions which we believe to be in the best interest of the majority of residents. Amen. 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 Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Village Hall. This is, a, this is the annual organization meeting for Tuesday, December 7, 2015. The organization meeting is a special meeting of village government held on the first Monday of each December each year. It is the meeting whereby elected officials and trustees and newly elected officials are sworn in, village representatives are formally reappointed, as well as chairs, members of the village's primary statutory boards, particularly the planning board, the HRB, and the ZBA. Uh, there's also tr traditional formalities that we will follow to appoint chairs and members of certain other non-statutory boards, including the Parks and Recreation Commission, the Nominating Committee, the Ethics Committee, Board of Assessment, Review, uh, Housing Board of Appeals, Library Board, also the Traffic Committee, Youth Service Council, and the Tree Commission as examples. Ad hoc committees serve at the pleasure of the mayor. As such, we do not, uh, does not require a motion or a vote, uh, but which we do formally recognize. They do great work and we want to recognize them at the organizational meeting as we've always done in the past. And then we'll have a few things uh, related to official depositories, newspapers, radio stations, setting the meeting calendar of the board. Uh, for the coming session and a quick outline reaffirming how the meetings will be conducted and then I'll say a few words uh, before we conclude the meeting. So to get things started, the first thing we do is to swear in the mayor uh, and then I will swear in the elected and newly elected trustees uh, after that. So, and it is my honor uh, to be, uh, be sworn in this year by Village Clerk Liz Draper. So we'll come down here and do this. swear to support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of mayor of the village of Alpsbury to the best of your ability. I do.
options. <laughs> Love you. Thank you for all the support. And uh, look forward to another couple of years with everybody. Yeah. Now I'm going to swear in the elected official trustee, uh, Vincent Goyle. Vinny? Oh, oh, try it again. Vinny was still up. We switched the sweet scene up here a little bit, so that's what's throwing me off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you raise your right hand. Is it, do you solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York? and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Village Trustee of the Village of Dobbs Ferry to the best of your ability. Congratulations. I would just like to acknowledge my wife, Fran, and my daughter, Alice, Alexandra, I should say. Thank you for coming, taking your time out of your busy schedules to be here, so thank you for that. And you also all the times I'm not at home on Tuesdays, so thanks again for your support. And I'd like to uh, thank everyone else's Else for their support. It's uh, been interesting the last two terms, and let's hope that we can uh, go forward uh, as we have in the past. So thank you again for everyone's support. Thanks. Thank you. Congratulations to you. Congratulations to you as well. And now I'd like to uh, swear in our newly elected uh, elected official, Anna Lisa Corrales. Anna, would you join me? Constitution of the State of New York, and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Village Trustee of the Village of Dobbs Ferry to the best of your ability. I do. Thank you, Mayor. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank my family for supporting me on this journey, and I think they'll have to continue supporting me for the next couple of years when I'm not there as much. But even when mommy's not there to tuck you in, I love you. Um, and thank you so much to everyone who's uh, encouraged me to, to serve in this capacity. Uh, I really look forward to two years of learning. I think I, I will learn a lot about this village, I know I will. And I just hope that we can work together, have fun, and at the same time get a lot done for this village and do our best. Thanks. <coughs> Congratulations to all the newly elected officials. You can make it shorter. Okay, so we're now going to move through um, the appointments for uh, village representatives and I will be taking motions on uh, several of these, but not all of them. It'll be a requirement for us to take a motion for the attorney for the village, the acting village justice, as well as the village vehicle and traffic prosecutor. Uh, there'll be some reappointments after that that I won't need to take motions on, but we will reaffirm. And I'll just make a note as we get through and move through the agenda uh, where we'll be required to take a motion and where we won't, just to kind of speed things up a little bit. So uh, moving forward to, let's see, it'll be on the agenda action item number nine is, uh, sorry, action item number seven is to reappoint uh, Dari, Darius Shafazeda as the attorney for the village for a term of one year. This will require a motion, so is there a motion? Trustee Golio, second. Trustee O'Donnell, uh, all in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It passes unanimously. Um, fantastic. Uh, Darius, congratulations. Uh, you did a great job serving this village. Um, helping us navigate a lot of you know, political minefields and the, uh, well, really the legal minefields that are out there. But you've been a great voice of reason and really supported all the trustees and looking forward to working with you. You've done a great job. Thanks very much. And I think as reinforcement, I want to thank the trustees for giving you the, your support too. It's well earned. Glad to be here. Thank you. Go back and do six. Six. Well, I'm just, yeah. I'm just jumping around here a little bit too much, but thanks. It's a good thing we, I got a lot of support up here. This was really an important one that, that, I'm, that I'm proud to do here, but uh, I want to appoint Vic Golio as Deputy Mayor, um, and that is an appointment of the Mayor and Vic. Um, happy to have you sitting up here on the right side. We've been doing this for a while together, but there is nobody more qualified or more deserving of being uh, to be 
uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, then Vic. He's done a great job as trustee. He's really earned this. And uh, Vic, look forward to working with you. And congratulations on being Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Yeah. Um, action number eight, or item number eight, is to reappoint Robert Hardwood as the acting village justice for a term of one year. Is there a motion? Trustee Rosillo, second. Trustee Cassell, all in favor? And that passed with seven eyes. And we want to thank uh, Robert, who's done a great job uh, representing the village as village justice. And we are glad he's uh, going to be serving again. Uh, nine will be to reappoint Bonnie Fisher as the village vehicle and traffic <laughs> prosecutor for a term of one year. Is there a motion? Uh, trustee Golio, uh, second. Trustee Flynn, all in favor? Great, that passes with seven eyes. Uh, the next reappointments I'll just make, it doesn't really require a motion, but we do want to recognize these individuals and reappoint them for really important and meaningful positions. Uh, ten is to reappoint Dr. Richard Borkow as the village histori historian for a term of one year. Uh, Richard has done a fantastic job uh, as village historian, working closely with the historical society, as, as we all know, uh, being very much involved in you know, reminding us of our history and the great things that have happened here. Uh, he's very passionate about it. He does a great job in terms of, uh, you know, working to archive the history of the village. And we're very, very lucky to have Richard. And, of course, his wife, Linda, is very much involved as well. But um, uh, he's been a great village historian, and we want him to continue in that way. Um, Eleven is to reappoint Bob McLaughlin as the Greenberg liaison for a term of one year. Uh, obviously, we are part of the town of Greenberg, and there's a lot of things that do take place on the... Uh, you know, the, the, the town level that we're not always plugged into or we don't always get a heads up. Uh, Bob, you know, has the time and does a very, very good job in, in making sure that he brings things to us uh, that, we, that might be of importance in terms of initiatives or issues that the, uh, the town of Greenberg uh, is going to be uh, working on and it might uh, have impact on the village of Dobbs Ferry. Uh, Bob, as many of you know, is also very actively involved as the chair of the budget committee, which we'll talk a little bit about. So he, he's really got a lot of involvement with the village, and we just want to thank him not only for you know taking on this responsibility, but for everything that he does to help uh, to help the board um, and, and residents in general. Twelve is to reappoint Don Mara as the CDGB representative for a term of one year. Uh, Don's done a very good job as this, and I also want to note that we'll be reappointing Don as the Children's Village representative for a term of one year. Um, he's, you know, obviously everybody knows who Don is and his involvement as a, as a former mayor, uh, knows so much about this village, has given so much of himself to the village, and uh, he wants to continue, uh, has a lot of energy left to continue in these two roles, and um, we're glad that he's going to continue to be involved. Uh, the next uh, motions that I'll ask for do have a uh, purpose directly, in some cases, related to statutory boards, which I'll explain. Uh, some will, some won't, but we'll get through basically the, the statutory boards, which are, you know, important parts of the village code and, and really are part of legislation, as they are referred to really as the statutory boards. Other boards are more of a, of a recommending uh, nature, and we, we don't need to get through as formal a motion as those, and again, for the sake of time. 14 is the Architectural and Historical Review Board. 13 for the time with the children's vote. Yeah, I mentioned both of those, right? Okay. Do we, um, did we vote on, did, we don't need to vote on these. We decided I can just uh, announce the reappointments for Don as CDB yes, yes. G representative Don. and uh, as children's <coughs> village representative as well. So moving uh, to the uh, Architectural and Historical Review Board, um, regular members serve uh, three-year terms and they're uh, if there's enough bodies and people around, there are also alternative members too. Uh, but for this time around, uh, we are going to be uh, considering reappointing Ayer Rosencrantz as a regular member for a term of three years and Dippy Shaw as first alternate member for a term of one year. Is there a motion? I'll look to uh, Bill Flynn for this. Trustee Flynn, second. Trustee Cassell, all in favor? Great, and that passed with seven eyes. And we want to thank Ayer and Dipta and Mike, um, the chairperson, who really do such a great job on the AHRB. They've been very, very busy. They've done great work. I know they love what they're doing. We are looking for additional members. I think, actually, we recently had a couple of people that did come through the nominating committee process, but sort of at the, at the, sort of the end of the day, they felt that they didn't have really enough time to serve. So they, they pulled out, unfortunately. Um, but that's OK. Um, it happens. Uh, but the nominating committee, I think, does have another individual that we're looking at. So hopefully we'll be able to add a member to this board, hopefully soon, to, 
to, to beef it up a little bit because they've really been working hard to try to make their regular meetings with just three, three folks. Um, the Board of Assessment Review, I won't take a motion on, but just to note uh, that we'll be reappointing Bob McLaughlin as chair, Paul Stern, Jack Rockefeller, Megan McLaughlin, Doug Newman, Dale Unterman, Adam Spielberger as regular members, each for a term of one year. This was actually a, a, uh, a, a, a board that we put together just a couple of years ago, I think, when we decided to move more towards having the taxes assessed by the Greenberg tax assessor as, to, as opposed to paying for our own tax assessor to do it. We did save quite a bit of money to do it. We've actually found that it allows the village tax rolls to tie more into the Greenberg tax rolls, so we're, we're, we're more uh, in sync on that, if you will. But the Board of Assessment Review uh, essentially meets and, and looks at each case that becomes comes before uh, during tax time and, and, and certiorari time and makes recommendations to the Board of Trustees ultimately uh, as to whether we should accept or modify a, a tax cert that may come in. So it's good to have a, a set of different set of eyes looking at this, in, in this case some folks here that we really are thankful that are putting in. They've, they've, they've done great work and it's really paid off for the village over the last couple of years. So thanks for all the work that uh, you folks do on the Board of Assessment Review. Uh, Housing Board of Appeals, same thing, just to note that we'll reappoint Bradley Bulky and Steve Gifford as regular members each for a term of two years. I wish there was an issue involving the House of Board of and we could get Bradley here to kind of lighten things up a little bit. He's always got a good joke to say. <laughs> but, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll note that. Uh, am I skipping anything? Am I skipping skip the conservation advisory okay. board. Um, okay, skip back to 16, which I do want to take a motion on because the conservation advisory board is an important board within our village code. Uh, we do look to them, obviously, uh, for things involving uh, environmental issues, redevelopment issues. They've been involved in some recent projects, and they've been a, a great source of support and, uh, uh, and education for this village board and decisions it makes. Uh, regarding things related to conservation and, and the environment. Um, and I'd like to take a motion to reappoint Tony Losey and Matthew McCormick as regular members. This will each be for a term of three years. Donna, can I look to you for that? Second, Trustee... Lisa. Lisa. Uh, Trustee Lisa. Corrales, all right. <laughs> all in favor? Great, that passed with seven eyes. Thank you. Okay, housing board, board of appeals we did. Uh, the library. Board. Just make a note uh, to reappoint Carolyn Schwartz for a term of five years as a regular member of the library board. And Jeff, I'll look to you for, well, we don't need a motion on that, but just to, to note okay. that. Um, 19, again, nominating committee, just to make a note here, uh, these will be for one year terms to reappoint Bob McLaughlin as chairman uh, and to reappoint Ellen Crane, Ilana Dunner, Rishi Gupta, Anna Maria Kanaj. Kenna Karasha, Nancy Keene, Emmy, uh, Emma Lou Lewis, Miriam Maserol, Paula McCarthy, Jack Rockefeller, Matt Rosenberg, Bill Singleton, Adam Spielberger, Patty Steinschneider, Dale Unterman, and Nancy Volatek as regular members each for a term of one year. A lot of people are on this nominating committee, and it's for good reason, but this is really the, the sort of beginning part of the process to interview and to filter and to uh, reach out to the community for people that might be interested in serving on the various committees, whether it be statutory <coughs> committees or ad hoc committees. Um, you know, it's an obvious part of the checks and balances, so that nobody can say that the mayor or a certain uh, majority of people are trying to, you know, stack, stack certain boards or put people in certain places. Uh, um, we take recommendations from the nominating committee. It's a, it's a completely independent process, and they do a great job in recommending uh, um, qualified uh, volunteers for, for us. So we thank them for their work. Uh, for Parks and Recre Recreation, great, uh, great commission there. Um, just one change, and that is to appoint Nancy Keene. She'll be the newest member of the Recreation Commission for a term of five years. Um, and we really you know, thank the work that the Parks and Recreation Com Commission are involved in. Uh, they not only obviously are very much involved in the uh, uh, development and design of youth programs, but the senior programs as well. Uh, Nancy has a great history and, and some interest particularly in, in, in special needs children, which is a great thing to have as part of that, uh, that commission. And uh, I'm glad, really glad and want to thank her for giving her time and, and, and joining the, uh, the commission. It's also, I think, going to be a really exciting couple of years uh, ahead for the Recreation Commission. 
Um, there's a, a good amount of funds available for reinvestment uh, in, the, in the recreation programs and really looking forward to what we can all work together on to, uh, to make things happen over the next couple of years. I will take a motion in regards to the planning board. This will be to reappoint uh, uh, Alan Hale and Rob Lane as regular members. Uh, this will be each for a term of five years. I will take a motion on this as this is a statutory uh, board. And I will look to Trustee Cassell for the motion on this. Donna, second. Trustee Corrales, uh, all in favor? And that passes with seven eyes. And I uh, want to recognize uh, Steve Hunter, who's in the, uh, <laughs> in, the, uh, in the room here tonight, in the audience, uh, who chairs the planning board. What a great board this is. Uh, you know, we had a, a, a very dynamic and powerful leader for a long time there, Mr. Plotkin, who uh, stepped down some time ago. But Steve, you really stepped up in a great way in leading this uh, board in such a fantastic way. And, Obviously, there's been a lot of activity in the village over the last couple of years. There's some uh, pretty important projects before the planning board right now, and the board's doing just a great job taking their time and very thoughtful review. And we're very, very lucky to have people like Steve Hunter and Alan Hale and Rob Lane and the other members of that board that serve and, um, and help the community. Thanks very much. Uh, traffic committee. This is not a statutory committee, but an important one. We, uh, we, we send a lot of things to them to look at in regards to, obviously, parking and traffic issues, which are big issues in the village. And just want to note that uh, we will be reappointing for one-year terms Gary Anna Carrico, who has served well as chairman, does a great job. Gary knows this village extremely well, has worked closely with the chief of police, the village administrators, the DPW, about all the various issues, no matter what street it might be. He really has an incredible uh, knowledge of all of that, and he brings that to this committee, which is really great. I want, want to recognize also Mr. Rob Barron, Brad Bolke, Brian Mitchell, Larry Murphy, Leo Vicchio, uh, Stephanie Pietros, Frank Farrington, Larry Monteleone, uh, Ann Zink, Rick uh, Guevara, who is the Police Department Liaison, uh, Trustee Donna Cassell, who uh, is Public Safety Committee of the Board of Trustees, ex, ex officio, and the great work Donna and the interest that she has in this important issue, also serving on this uh, committee, again, as ex officio trustee. Betsy Gilardi is the Chief of Police, ex officio, Jerry McElvain, uh, fire chief ex officio, and these again all will serve for a term of one year. Um, we have a tree commission, and uh, we will be reappointing Brian Cook, building inspector, village uh, officer, employee, ex officio member, and Erna, I always have a hard time with this every year, Capitana Polis as regular members, um, and this will be also for a term of one year. Uh, Youth Service Council. Uh, this is for a three-year term. When, uh, happy to reappoint uh, John Kleiman for a term of three years. Um, Trustee Rosillo, who's been very active with the Youth Service Council for the last couple of years. Uh, this has really been a, a committee that's been doing great work. The council has been doing great work with the youth. Uh, they've recently uh, received some incredible new funding from the state. Um, and Lisa Bai and everybody involved is really doing such a great job. We really thank them for all their work and working with the youth. Thank you. Uh, and finally, uh, we'll take a motion for this one as a statutory board, the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, regular members serve for three-year terms, alternate members for one-year term. I'll take a motion to reappoint Peter Hoffman as chairman for a term of three years, Bruce Gombos as a regular member for a term of three years, and Joseph Capasso as first alter alternate member for a term of one year. And I'll look to uh, <coughs> Trustee Rosillo for the motion on that. Uh, second, Trustee Gol Golio. All in favor? Great, that passed with seven eyes. Uh, thanks very much. Now, I just want to run through the ad hoc committees. Um, again, we typically reaffirm and or decommission uh, ad hoc village committees each at each um, organizational meeting. Ad hoc committees are formed uh, by the mayor and serve at the pleasure of the mayor, and typically these are committees that will either be formed to look at what might be a, a special initiative or a special project, uh, which they will do work on in development and design and recommendations to the Board of Trustees, and eventually if and when that project or initiative is completed, then the work of that ad hoc committee will, be, will also be completed. In some cases, we uh, might decide that we keep these uh, ad hoc committees in, in place for perpetuity, uh, and those examples would be for the beautification committee and the budget committee that just sort of do things ongoing. The work really never ends. And, uh, you know, people may come and go, so the members may change, but we keep the committee uh, intact because of the work that it does. We will add uh, as new things are faced by the, by the village that might require, uh, you know, uh, people to look at in a concentrated way or, or we want to 
uh, get some, some different type of input. And uh, so just recognizing the ad hoc village committees, uh, the beautification committee, uh, recognizing Merle Hubner as chair, Robin Allen, Elizabeth Everett, Diane Falk, Diane Falk, Mary Gerber, Suzanne Klossick, uh, Mary Vickione, and Betsy Westerl as regular members, and this will be, again, all serving for a term of one year. We really, really thank the Beautification Committee, Merle and her group. They do a fantastic job, as you all know. You know, little things really matter, and, you know, just a lot of the corners are really beautifully decorated now, and they change them during the season, and it just makes a huge difference. Beautification Committee will also work very, very closely with the Friends of the Waterfront, and um, you know, as things will be looked at in terms of maintenance and how can plantings be enhanced down there, uh, they very much are looking forward to getting involved uh, with that. They've done a lot of work down at the train station parking lot, uh, uh, as another example, and um, we really thank them for the great work they do to make the Village of Dobbs Ferry more beautiful. Uh, budget Committee, uh, would rec want to recognize the Budget Committee and Bob McLaughlin as Chairman, Bruce Catania, David Oakes, Paul Stern, James Stone uh, as regular members, uh, each to serve again for a term of one year. This has been a great uh, Budget Committee, it actually ex existed before, before I took office. Uh, it was a great idea to form this committee. Uh, we've worked really well with them and want to thank all of them. They have really helped the process in terms of uh, more prudent budget planning, long-term planning. Uh, helping the staff, helping the department heads, and uh, um, you know, being another again another set of eyes and 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 ideas for how we can manage the finances of the bu business, uh, the business of the village better, and uh, and uh, try to keep tax rates as low as possible. You know, a lot of villages don't like having boards, don't like having budget committees because sometimes they can be the the guy in the room you don't want to hear from, and and things can get uh, are sometimes very very difficult. But we've taken a different approach, and we want to hear the good and the bad, and and look at it all, and it's uh, it's had a real positive impact. So thanks to the budget committee, energy task force. I think everybody knows about this. Uh, Jeff O'Donnell has uh, served on this committee and done a great job as liaison. Uh, what a wonderful group of people that have, have done so much. I uh, want to recognize Nina Orville, who will continue to serve as chair of the Energy Task Force, Kathy Bobbenhausen as secretary, Rob Barron, Kathy Dean, Susan DeGeorge, Holly Malakian, Patty Steinschneider, and Denise Wooden as regular members. Um, there probably has not been an ad hoc committee, well, there's been a few, but uh, very few that have worked uh, and done as much as the Energy Task Force in terms of you know, real initiatives and real projects that the village has, com has completed that have had a tremendous impact, not only in improving the environment here in Dobbs Ferry, setting a good example, setting the bar the bar so high, being recognized as a climate smart community that with the highest uh, award so far ever, ever rewarded in the state of New York, and to save taxpayer monies in a significant way, as this committee has done, this task force has done. So we're so lucky to have them, and Jeff, thanks for the work that you do with them, and uh, we're glad they're going to continue their work. Um, Next 129 is the Ferry Festa Committee, uh, recognizing Matt Arone and Pat Stein, Patty Steinsnyder for a term of one year. We're not always we're not always certain how this Ferry Festa comes together every year, but it does. And uh, Matt and Patty are really the reason why. It's sort of it is a two man show, but um, um, we have some other things to report tonight. Maybe and you'll hear me more in that. I think there'll be some more people getting involved. But what a great job they do! It's gotten bigger and bigger every year. And I think this year, uh, Betsy, I want to thank you. It was, the, I think, the biggest one we've ever had, but it seemed to be really the safest one we ever had, too. And, you know, we are, as, as these things get big, as you know, it, the challenges get a little bit different. And, you know, we're all there to have a good time. But, uh, um, you know, we had a few issues a few years ago and, and uh, you know, took some steps that not everybody was happy with. But I think it, it worked out well. So um, it's a great thing, and it's getting better every year. Um, 30 is the Senior Advocacy, Advocacy Committee. Um, Abby Kinnett as chair and Perrette Riesland uh, as co-chairs, uh, recognizing Matt Arone, Sid Udine, Anthony Losi, Judy Mayer, Roz Navarro as regular members, each for a term of one year. Um, Kathy Kay is going to formally be joining this uh, as well. She uh, former trustee and had did so much, and, and I know she wants to be involved, so I want to make note of that. Uh, but what, a, what great work that they do to uh, enhance the quality of life of the seniors in this village. Um, you know, 70 people, 60 people down there every day, and have you do a great job, and uh, Perrette does a great job down there, and I know we're looking forward to supporting, and really, again, getting back to sort of the Recreation Committee, um, really going to be some opportunities for this board uh, with input from the Recreation Committee and the Budget Committee and staff, you know, to possibly make some, you know, significant, meaningful, meaningful upgrades of the, of the Embassy Club. 
uh, over the next couple uh, over the next two years. I uh, hope we can make some movement on that. We'll work together, all of us. Um, but that would be great to benefit, uh, you know, not only the youth but certainly the seniors in this community. They really deserve it, and we can be more proud of that uh, that facility because of it. I want to recognize uh, 31, the Wildlife Committee, uh, Dan Evangelista is chairman, Robin Azzolini, Diane Lowry, uh, Bob Radomski, and Suzanne Whitney, each for a term of one year. We have a wildlife issues in the village. Uh, you know, the deer one is sort of ongoing, and, and uh, they've been very much involved with that uh, and other issues, whether it's feral cats or uh, other things. And just to keep us notified of, you know, some of the things that we need to be notified of, more and more things are sort of moving into the area um, that maybe weren't here before. But uh, thanks very much. And Donna, you've been involved with that one as liaison. Animals so. like it too. Animals like it too, you yeah. know. So those are the ones I wanted to mention. And I, not, uh, I didn't mention there isn't uh, one that we recently formed, which is the Waterfront Parking Committee. I just want to recognize it. Uh, Marie McKellar is the chair of that committee. Steve Hunter serves on it along with Bob McLaughlin, Betsy Gilardi, Donna Cassell, and Bill Flynn. We formed this uh, ad hoc committee actually just a couple of months ago to uh, work to address the parking issues specifically down at Waterfront Park. Uh, all, you all know what they are and there's actually been some actions that have been t taken as a direct result of this committee. We're going to keep this committee going. Uh, we typically formally reappoint these committees or re recognize them after you know one year cycle. So it, it hasn't been one year yet so that's why they're not on the agenda but I wanted to recognize them and that they're going to continue to do their good work and as we look at possibly expanding the parking lot down there and having to make some what could be some difficult decisions as we get into the new year and uh, about parking permits and and how many and to who to whom and and uh, they're going to be working on that as well um, so thanks for the work that they do um, I did um, work with the trustees and uh, you know part of our assignment uh, isn't just showing up here every uh, you know second and fourth Tuesday uh, but we all have liaison assignments and extra work that we do, uh, liaison with uh, various, various statutory boards and, and or ad hoc committees, special, special initiatives. And so we have assigned those, and I won't go through all of them today, but each of the trustees know what their assignments are. And uh, just noting a few things, uh, you know, obviously with Kathy leaving, we had to fill in a few there. So uh, Annalise, we're really, really happy that you're going to be uh, joining the Recreation Commission as liaison. And, you know... Annalise is going to be perfect for that because she's in the right demographic with younger kids and ours, ours have all sort of moved on at this point. So I think you're perfect for this and I know you, you, uh, you really wanted it too and I know that they're looking forward to having you join down there. Annalise and I went to a meeting a couple of weeks ago together and uh, you know some really exciting stuff that I think you're going to be involved with down there that you're going to be able to report back on. So I think that's going to be great. Um, everybody else is kind of doing what they were doing before. I did ask Trustee o O'Donnell to, um, to step as in as a liaison to the SAC committee, the Senior Advocacy Committee, and I didn't do it because of any age or anything like that. It's because it's not the gray hair. They, no, no, because they wanted him. And, uh, and he's just because he's, he's, he's so very good at everything, but uh, he will make such a meaningful uh, contribution to what you know, is going to be a lot of potentially good things that can happen down there. And Jeff, they're really looking forward to your input. Thank you so much for volunteering your time to do that. Thank you. Um, and then we'll all do our other things. The last one I just wanted to announce is that we we uh, we are going to decommission a, a few old um, um, older uh, ad hoc committees, and I'll explain that a little bit. One is the uh, the downtown improvement committee uh, will be officially decommissioned. Um, and uh, many of you may know that that committee was formed many, many years ago, uh, really in lieu of the fact that there never was an active or viable Chamber of Commerce in Dobbs Ferry, a group of people really trying to get together and just see how you could get, you know, the business community communicating a little bit better and ferry festa ideas and communicating to res residents what are the issue and really just a voice for not just the downtown, but a voice for merchants in the business. Um, and um, they did great work, and it's, it really is the reason why Do the Ferry Festa came back. It's a really direct result of the Downtown uh, Improvement Committee, and there's been some parking things that have been done. And, uh, but their work is done, and I think uh, really recognizing that there is a newly formed Dobbs Ferry Chamber of Commerce, and some of you may have been reading about it. We had uh, Matt Kay, who's a uh, business owner, uh, here the, a couple of weeks ago telling us more about it. There was a great article in the paper. I don't know if you yeah. saw it in the Enterprise, but if you haven't, please read it. Um, really exciting. Uh, really, all of the I think all of the downtown merchants are involved, uh, which is a first. Uh, the one the businesses at 145 are involved, and then they're reaching out to all of the other businesses that aren't downtown. 
Um, I think that there will be an announcement of a pop-up uh, store in 75 Main, uh, yeah. maybe coming out this week, which is exciting, over the holidays. Uh, so I do want to uh, uh, announce the formation of a new ad hoc committee, Chamber of Commerce, or uh, sorry, a, a new liaison position to the Chamber of Commerce. I think it's important for this board to know what's going on, and I'm asking uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, like, I like the, like the way that sounds, <laughs> Deputy Mayor Trustee Vic Golio to, uh, to take on that responsibility. You know, Vic's been here a long time. Um, I don't want to say he frequents a lot of the merchants regularly, but he, but he kind of does. <laughs> but, he, but he, but, but, and I mean all the residents there because he spends, you know, he really does support, as we all do, the downtown merchants. But uh, Vic, thanks for taking this on. I think you'll be great at this and just, you know, reporting back to the board and being, you know, a voice and a reach out to, uh, to the merchants as well in terms of things that we want to consider that involve them. Uh, and then finally, in terms of ad hoc uh, assignments, or I think that's it for ad hoc assignments. Yeah, but I do want to also note um, that we'll be decommissioning um, the Waterfront Committee. And I did speak with Steve Hunter about this last week. This was something that we were considering last year, but the timing wasn't right. Um, again, um, ad hoc committees, in this case, do very specific work, and then at some point, the work is done. And indeed, what great work this committee did uh, in, in helping to design, push through, and complete the Waterfront enhancement project. Um, we want to, of course, thank Marie and Arch McKellar for their incredible generosity and their gift, uh, and particularly Marie's passion and, and vision for this project. Uh, none of this would have happened without, without her. I want, to, I want to recognize and thank uh, the members that served on the Waterfront Committee over the years, and it was many years. Uh, again, Chairman Stephen Hunter, Matt Arone, Nancy Delmerico, Sid Udine, Frank Farrington, Steve Gifford, Elizabeth Martin, Arch McKellar, Marie McKellar, of course, and Steve Tilley. Um, that group did an incredible job, and uh, we just can't thank them enough. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done on the waterfront, and vis-a-vis uh, -vis the village and maintenance and uh, further enhancements and programming and usage. So there's going to continue to be a lot of work and cooperation um, going forward. Um, this board will, will um, and I'll be announcing some things in the near future, we'll be communicating more with the Friends of the, of the Waterfront, which is a 501c3 separate group, which has been formed and meets regularly, uh, primarily uh, uh, in, in a funding capacity to, to, to look for new ways for, for funding um, either future enhancements or, or maintenance requirements of the village. But, you know, obviously there's a lot of things involved with the running of a village and, and maintenance of the park and, and the Recreation Parks Commission that will be involved with the usage. So we all need to communicate, and we all will. Uh, and that's all going to be a, a very, very good thing is none of us uh, have any interest other than the enhancement and the beauty of the park and its function and how it looks and, and is used going forward. So thanks again to the Waterfront Committee and all the great work that you did. Um, Okay, so I'm going to move on to maybe some more mundane things, but we have to do these each year. 33 is to uh, recognize the official depositories of the village. We get a lot of input on this, particularly from the Treasury Department and, and Jeff. Uh, and um, I will just again recognize that the official depositories of the village will be J.P. Morgan Chase, Customers Bank, People's United Bank, Signature Bank, TD Bank North, Tompkins, Mayapak Bank, Wells Fargo, and Webster Bank. So we do have, you know, quite a, quite a big bank group, which is a good thing so that the village can diversify its exposures and its, and its investments and its, uh, its accounts. Uh, like, like, like anything, some, some banks are better at some things than other things. So, you know, Jeff will make that determination as the treasurer in conjunction with the uh, village administrator in terms of, you know, really which institutions can best serve the village and best serve the taxpayers, and we rely on them for that. Um, so those will be the official depositories of the village. Um, and each year, the mayor and I will this year authorize, uh, will confirm to authorize to continue the investment and procurement policies as recommended by the State of New York and as previously adopted by the Board of Trustees. So we have formally adopted a very strict financial investment uh, policies, procedures, what can be done and what can't, mostly what can't be done with, uh, with, with, with village investments um, and what we're entrusted with, and that is uh, part, of the, part of the code, and we reaffirm that every year. 
Uh, 34, I officially recognize that the official newspaper will continue to be the River Towns Enterprise. Even though I don't always agree with the letters that are written in the Enterprise, <laughs> but that's the way it goes. Um, the alternate official newspaper when the River Towns Enterprise does not publish will be the Journal News. Um, I will also announce that the Village uh, information will also continue to be available on the internet. Um, at www.dobbsferry.com. I'm going to make a few comments about that, but also via Cablevision Channel 75 and Verizon Channel 46. I want to thank first off uh, uh, Administrator uh, Gillardi and uh, Village Clerk, Liz Clerk, um, who have worked with the staff uh, to arrange to make sure that all the meetings are, are taped uh, live and, and then rebroadcast. And I know you're in the process of training village staff and Jennifer and whomever else is taking an interest to be involved with that so that we make sure that all the meetings are being you know, recorded and taped for the record and for the benefit of residents that, uh, I don't know why, I don't want to come to these meetings uh, in person, but uh, can watch live from home and then watch the, uh, the tape recording. So um, that's a good thing. Also, if, if you were, well, a couple of weeks ago we had somebody give a presentation to us um, and in terms of the Village website. This is a company that does provide services to basically upgrade websites and, and uh, to basically service and help you maintain them going forward at an unbelievable price. Yeah. And uh, I mean, cheaper than we're doing it now with someone who's practically volunteering to do the work. So um, I think that's something that we'll look at at our next meeting. Maybe consider, certainly consider taking action because it just seemed like the economics were so good and really could get even more enhancement. A lot of, a lot of work has been done to improve the, the, uh, the website, but you know, you know um, nobody's saying that there isn't a long way to go still and that we can do a lot better, so we want to do that. Um, so just a few notes on that. Uh, I will also announce that the official records of the Board of Trustees will continue to be uh, the minutes of the Board of Trustees, which Liz, again, does an incredible job uh, uh, publishing them and, and getting to us uh, on time every, every meeting uh, that we need to look at them. We're never really behind and we stay very current on that, so that's a, that's a good thing. Recognize that the official radio station will continue to be WFAS 103.9 FM on your dial. Um, just a few words here in terms of our uh, regular meetings of the Board of Trustees will continue to be held on the second and fourth Tuesdays of each month uh, beginning at 7.30 p.m. Um, actually, the, the meetings will begin at 6.30 p.m. in terms of executive session. So we have a proper process there where we open the meetings and then adjourn to executive se uh, session to exclusively discuss um, personnel matters and legal matters. Uh, and then we'll look to reopen the public hearing at 7.30 uh, sharp. Um, the, the date for, these uh, for the next December meeting, regular meeting, will be December 15th, 2015, so we'll note that on the calendar. Uh, meetings for the April budget hearing and budget adoption and any additional budget-related public hearings or public meetings uh, will be scheduled at a future date. Um, and also just note that uh, we, you know, we do have a summer session, so we'll, we'll work on our August, July and August meetings where we typically have one meeting uh, a month, of course, unless there's some extraordinary reason to have more than that, uh, but we'll announce, we'll announce them in due course. Um, just uh, number 40, Mayor, to announce that the procedures for the guidelines of the Board of Trustees agenda meetings will remain in effect. So, yes, we're we'll going to continue to run the meetings uh, as we have in the past. I, I think they've run very, very well and very efficiently. Um, you know, we do want to give everybody a chance to be heard, which we do during persons to be heard. Um, and, um, you know, generally speaking, we'll have that to, to start each, each meeting, uh, that anyone can come and before the board um, to talk about uh, anything that might be on the agenda or not on the agenda or anything that they're concerned about. Uh, we generally like to keep those comments to three minutes, but we can we'll make some discretions, at, uh, some, some exceptions at our discretion. Um, if in my discretion there are things on the agenda, of course I'll talk to the members of the board beforehand on this as well, taking input, uh, that are, you know, hot items, big items, you know, tending to be maybe more on the redevelopment type of projects or something that might be an issue that might be impacting or affecting a particular neighborhood. Uh, then I will announce at the beginning of the meeting that we'll take, we'll take additional public comments um, when we get to the agenda item at that time. But, you know, what we really want to try to do, and I think we've done successfully, is to strike the right balance between giving everybody a fair chance to be heard and to speak while not getting too bogged down so that we, you know, don't uh, have enough time to conduct the business of the village in a professional, efficient way. 
and so that we can get home on a, at a decent hour at night too. So again, I think they've run really, really well and we're going to continue to follow along that same format. And we appreciate every, everybody's cooperation with that. Um, okay, that's really it. I just wanted to make some closing uh, remarks here. Um, I want to once again welcome Annalisa Corrales to the board. Thank you. Uh, Lisa, Annalisa, Annalisa, or Anna, is it, how do you like it? My, my parents chose to give me a very long name. Uh, Annalisa is actually my first name. So then they tacked on a middle name in addition oh, to that. Oh, we did So Annalisa is the, the short Whatever person. Whatever comes out is fine because okay. I've gotten it all. <laughs> <laughs> Annalisa, we look forward to working with you and your positive contributions. Thank welcome you. to the board. Welcome to the team. Thank you so much. I want to also congratulate uh, Vic and Vinnie on being reelected, and I want to again congratulate uh, Vic Goliel on his appointment as deputy mayor. It's a, it's a, it's an, it's a great honor uh, to serve with you and the rest of you, and uh, Vic, you deserve it. And thanks very much. Um, uh, and there's, you know, there's a lot that goes into being a trustee, uh, work and time and commitment. So I really want to thank everyone, um, Bill, Donna. Jeff, uh, all the time that you put in, you've done a great, great, great job. You've been great trustees and really look forward to working with, with you all, too. It's going to be a great team. I know it. Uh, I want to thank all the staff. Just take a little bit of time to thank all the staff and village volunteers for their commitment to help and support the residents. It's just a good time to do this. Um, Betsy, I want to thank you as chief of police and, and all the Dobbs Ferry police officers for all that you do, keeping us safe and, and the issues, particularly in the world today, that, that, we're, that we're impacted and what you're doing to keep us safe during these difficult times. I want to thank Chief McIlvain and all the assistant chiefs and all the volunteer Dobbs Ferry Fire Department members and their families. They make themselves available 24-7 all the time and when we need help the most. I want to thank the Dobbs Ferry All Volunteer Ambulance Corps and the EMS I want to thank all the DPW crews, highway and garbage, uh, Gary Gardner, and, and all, the, all the men who work there, especially as we approach you know, the winter and what we know we're going to be facing then. They, they have really tough jobs. They do such a great job. I want to thank Jeff Tudor. Jeff, as a village treasurer that we recently appointed uh, as, as, as the treasurer, moved out of that period, and uh, uh, you've done such a great job, and uh, really look forward to, to working with you. We've had issues to deal with in terms of union contracts to get settled, which we've recently done with the police. We're working forward with the PBA now, and um, it's, you've been so helpful, and, and your knowledge has been great, and uh, I know it's going to be a real benefit to, to us and to taxpayers when we get towards the budgeting time, which is really all year round. Um, so thanks for all that you do. Look forward to working with you. I want to thank Liz Draper, village clerk, who does a great job communicating and making sure that these, uh, these meetings run and many other things uh, function within the village. We have a great building department. They've been very, very busy. Ed Manley, Brian Cook, Pat Horney, um, they do a great job. All the Village Hall staff, Jennifer, who's taping tonight, Dave and Megan uh, in Village Hall, uh, our recreation staff, Matt Arone and Mike and everybody involved. I want to thank Judge Grant and all the Village Court staff, uh, the senior advocates, of course, we've mentioned before, the library directors and staff, parking and traffic enforcement. That's a tough job. You know, not everybody has a good uh, relationship with parking and traffic enforcement, but uh, that's a tough job, and they, they, they try to balance that and, and do the right thing there. Of course, uh, village engineer George Palmer, village planner Dwight Douglas, everybody involved. This is a really big team effort. It's a big job uh, with a lot of challenges and things that get thrown at you and things that always go wrong, roads, pipes that break, sewers, mains, drains, wires, lines. Gas and power utilities that tend to work against you rather than for you, and Mother Nature that throws all kinds of things at them. But this is a great team. They work very hard every day, nights as well, <clears throat> to provide the essential services that make Dobbs Ferry a desirable place at the lowest tax rates possible. And there's a reason why Dobbs Ferry ranks so high, or you really should say so low, on New York State's stress test monitor. It's because of the combination of committed and professional workers, our staff, along with the prudent budgeting and planning procedures, which you know, we've implemented, and this board's been very much involved with that, and which will remain a top priority, has and will continue to serve Dobbs Ferry taxpayers very well going forward. I also want to just thank all the volunteers in general, everybody who gives their time, whether you coach, uh, whether you help pick up, uh, whatever it is that you do, and there's so many ways to get involved, so we want to encourage you to get involved, but there's many, many people that do things that never get any credit and just do it because they want to. We're so grateful, we're so thankful, to have so many people that give back, and I've always said that you know a village's strength and and uh, and, and health is is measured directly by the you know, the number of people that give back, and for that we are a very very lucky community, and we're a very very healthy community because of it. 
just personally, like everyone else up here and out there, uh, my family and I love Dobbs Ferry. We want to stay here as long as possible. It is an honor for me to serve as mayor and to represent all the residents as a trustee. I take this job and its responsibility very seriously, and I work very, very hard at this. I promise to lead the board in a nonpartisan way, to listen, to listen more, and to listen even more. While this is serious business, it's also a goal of mine that I want to smile more up here. <laughs> uh, I'm really going to try to work on that um, while I'm doing this. I do want to evolve and learn from my prior experiences, and I want to be an even better mayor because of that. So um, we're going to work very, very hard at that. Uh, I think, as everybody knows, the board has been very, very active over the past few years. We've done a lot of projects, a lot of initiatives, uh, gotten done, moved forward. We haven't always uh, agreed on everything, but we've worked really well as a team. And I really do believe that Dobbs Ferry is going to be a very hot place to be uh, now and a very desirable place for, for people to invest in the future. That's a good thing for us as taxpayers and as property owners, certainly. But, you know, change, change is hard for people. And uh, we know that and we recognize it. We maybe don't always appreciate it enough, but it is really hard. And, and people are afraid of that. So we have to be careful to take our time and carefully review any new projects that, that uh, have and will come before us. We know that. Uh, as we've done before, and we'll take input from everybody, certainly. We'll take reasonable time to analyze and make thoughtful decisions, which are in the best interest of the majority of residents, and which will make Dobbs Ferry a better and more sustainable village for the, for the future. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight and everybody watching. And on behalf of the board, we want to wish everybody a very happy and safe holiday season. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. We had a great tree lighting event on Saturday. It was great to see everybody come out. We have a, a, a great menorah lighting scheduled for tomorrow night uh, at 7 o'clock uh, in Village uh, Cedar uh, Main Plaza. Um, so we look forward to that. You know, that's another great thing about this community, the diversity of, this, of the, the place where we live and the, and the respect that we have for, for each other and our backgrounds and our traditions and our culture. And again, it's what makes this place such a healthy place, and we all should be very proud of that. Um, we've got a couple of holiday announcements here just real quick. Um, the holiday food drive uh, at the Dobbs Ferry Public Library is ongoing through December 30th. Uh, Non-perishable food donations will be accepted during regular hours. I want to remind everybody of the 2015 holiday parking program. This runs from Saturday, December 5th through Thursday, December 31st. When any shopper presents a paid receipt from any store or stores in the village for pur purchases made between those dates for an amount totaling over $50, um, they will be given a free $10 parking meter card. So you can present that receipt at Village Hall. Uh, the giveaway will be offered to the first 100 shoppers, and there will be a limit of one card per person. The shopper must be present to receive the parking meter card. Receipts will be accepted Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Village Hall. Again, uh, just a reminder, the menorah lighting, which will be tomorrow evening, Tuesday, December 8th at 7 p.m. at the corner of Cedar and Main. I'm looking forward to that. It's always a, a fun night, dancing the horror a little bit. Lots of latkes out there, and it's a fun mm -hmm. traditional music. It's great. Uh, the senior holiday party, Tuesday, December 22nd, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Embassy Community Center. Call 693-7792 for information. Uh, want to announce the, ho the Holiday Hustle 5K run. Uh, this is supported by the Recreation Department, the Youth Service Council, very much involved with this. That is uh, this coming Sunday, December 13th at 9.30 a.m. The race will start at Mercy College, and the finish line is at 112 Main Street, which is right here in front of Village Hall. Uh, call the Recreation Department at 693-0024 for information. And finally, the Toy for Tots collection at Village Hall is ongoing now through December 23rd. This is something that Liz Draper has very much been involved with for many years, and it's a great thing, great cause. Donations of new unwrapped toys may be dropped off at Village Hall Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. And that is it. We've come to, we've come to the end. Thanks very much. Uh, look forward to the next session. Happy holidays, everybody. Meeting is adjourned. Great. Congratulations.